This was Angela Irizari before her surgery. She didn't have much energy and couldn't do the things that three-year-old children enjoy, like run or ride a bike very far. Angela was born with a congenital heart defect that left her with one ventricle pumping blood through her body instead of two. One of the most severe forms of congenital heart disease um, are a diverse group of structural anomalies that result in what's called single ventricle physiology. And these are children that are basically born with half a heart. Hello. Say hi. Hello. 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 This is Angela, three months after the groundbreaking operation in August 2011 to graft a new blood vessel made of her body's own cells to help her heart function efficiently. It was the first time this operation had been performed in the United States. It made Angela's heart well, complete. Um, before, when she wants to run with um, um, her brother, she gets tired easier. And now she, she, she doesn't want to stop. She, she can keep going. Right, Angela? Yes. So she's, her oxygen level is very, very good now. The Irizari family's long journey began in November 2007, when Angela was born with only one functional ventricle. The heart's two ventricles collect and pump blood through the body. One sends blood to the lungs where it is mixed with oxygen, the second pumps that oxygenated blood back to the body's circulatory system. With one ventricle trying to do the work of two, there is much less oxygen flowing to the body. And these children are uh, typically known as blue babies because they're very cyanotic, because their oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood is mixed, um, and so these, uh, this, this results in, in, in blue discoloration. Without surgical intervention, there is a 70% mortality in the first year of life, and survival to adulthood is very unusual. In order for the surgeon to uh, successfully rearrange the plumbing, uh, it requires the use of synthetic or man-made materials. Um, uh, specifically, it requires the use of a vascular graft or conduit. And it turns out that complications uh, arising from the use of these um, synthetic materials are a, a leading cause of post-operative uh, morbidity and mortality. The synthetic grafts are susceptible to clotting, infection, and rejection, all life-threatening. Furthermore, they can't grow with the child, who must endure repeated open-heart surgeries to replace the graft. So children can actually outgrow their operations just the way they can outgrow their shoes. Uh, but imagine living in a world where every time your child outgrew their shoes, they needed to go back to the operating room and, and have an operation. Dr. Christopher Brewer is a pediatric surgeon at the Yale School of Medicine. He came to Yale in 2003, determined to make a difference. On a daily basis during my training, um, I would see problems arise for which we had no real solutions. And uh, because we couldn't fix these problems, I would watch children die and watch families fall apart. Working with fellow Yale cardiac surgeon Toshi Shinoka, who had developed a version of this surgery in Japan, and a team of biomedical engineers from Yale led by Mark Saltzman, the team came up with a novel idea. What if they were able to construct a vascular graft from the patient's own cells? Their hypothesis was that it would grow with the child and it would not be rejected. So the, the graft is made from a, a fabric of a degradable polymer. Uh, the polymer is called polylactic glycolic acid and it's a polymer that's well known to be safe in, uh, in people. It's been used in medicine for, for many, uh, many decades. And what was unique here is that it's, uh, it's fashioned into a tube uh, so it takes the form of a graft, and then it's seeded with cells from the patient, and uh, those are collected from the bone marrow, and, uh, and uh, then uh, placed in contact with this graft, and then uh, incubated for a short period of time before the surgeons implant it into the, uh, into the site. What makes this better than a conventional synthetic graft is, is really twofold. One, you're using cells from the patient uh, and placing them on this material. And what develops then is a real tissue that's formed from the patient's own cells. So there's no immunological uh, problems. The synthetic material itself disappears. And so there's nothing left behind to create any toxic effects. So within a few months after the operation, 
what's left is none of the polymer and in its place is a normal blood vessel. We set out trying to create a tissue engineered vascular graft um, that we could use instead of using these synthetic man-made grafts with the hope that if we could create these from your own tissues uh, that they would be living vascular conduits and would not have all these problems. They'd have a lower incidence of thromboembolic complications, uh, they'd be less susceptible to infection, uh, and they'd have growth potential. And um, so far, um, our, our hypothesis has proven correct. Uh, actually, these, these grafts um, uh, do work quite well and um, uh, do possess growth potential, um, you know, precluding the need for additional surgeries in these children. In other words, they had naturally rebuilt a defective heart to make it complete. Brewer and his team believe they had developed a successful procedure, but convincing the U.S. Food and Drug Administration that this was safe and effective took time and patience. It was uh, well worth the effort. Um, the FDA was uh, very good to work with. We were both focused on one thing. We wanted to make this trial as safe as possible. And the FDA had um, a number of uh, really excellent suggestions that helped us uh, design a better and safer study. Chris Brewer even let his hair and beard grow long, vowing not to cut them until FDA approval came. In November 2009, it finally did. It was um, uh, terrifying and exciting at the same time. The next task was finding the first patient. Angela Irizarry and her family came to see Dr. Brewer to be evaluated. We, we, we talked to a number of people, but uh, really felt that the Irizarry family were quite a special family. Um, they were all very bright and very intelligent. They asked very probing and, and appropriate questions. And so um, it seemed like the right combination. We had the child who, who would potentially benefit from this procedure, um, who met all of our criteria to be included in the study. And we had a, a family that understood um, what this was all about and you know, really understood the potential um, risks involved and the potential benefits. And so I felt like I could um, uh, really obtain what's called informed consent. What was it like for you when Angela was sick? What were you feeling? Well, I believe in God, and I have um, strong faith that if God sent me Mommy. the baby, Mommy, it can work. Um, if he send me the baby, he's gonna send me um, the Mommy, the angels on. to care her. So when we first met Angela, um, you know, she did have some cyanosis. Her her um, her energy level wasn't really what you'd expect it to be for for a little three year old. So the thought of being able to perform an operation uh, and um, have a child um, improve uh, improve their oxygenation level, um, improve their energy level, and, and have better growth and development. Um, you know, was um, what we were looking for. You know, she has her condition, but she, anyway, she's been very uh, healthy, you know. So, um, I was, I was believed that everything is gonna be okay. I'm, I'm trust so much to the hell, um, to the Yale hospital. Angela's surgery was scheduled for August, 2011. We probably did about 20 um, practice runs just to get ready for this, and my my lab is probably more like a like a track practice than a laboratory at times, where we actually had stopwatches and we were you know trying to save every second we we could. Angela's surgical team was led by doctors Brewer and Shinoka and cardiothoracic surgeon Gary Kopf. On the day of the procedure, we actually had things scripted out with times, and, and it was you know, probably sort of like managing a play or, or a television show, and that we had to make sure we kept uh, you know, meeting our, our milestones and, and accomplishing things at the same time. And it, it actually worked out perfectly. Within 30 seconds of the surgeon needing the graft, it was there, ready, and had met all of its release criteria. So the, the hard work paid off. As she recovered, Angela was attentively cared for by doctors and nurses at the Yale New Haven Children's Hospital. She had one complication, an infection, which was successfully treated but kept her in the hospital for two weeks instead of one. After that, Angela came home to complete her recovery. Slowly, she began to do things she couldn't do before. Before she was normal, but you need to stop <coughs> and limit, <Right>. limit <coughs> her... Um, um, physical activities. Now, she doesn't have any limit. In November, 
Angela celebrated her fourth birthday at home, a healthy little girl who showed all signs of being able to live a normal life. Her improvement was really remarkable. Uh, the last time I saw her in clinic, um, she really was a normal three-year-old running around, and uh, her mom informed me that for the first time she can ride a bicycle. What about the future? Angela can't go to school for another year because her immune system is not completely up to snuff yet, but Dr. Brewer is hopeful that her body will adapt. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, I, I think Angela will, will have be a very normal child. Um, you know, she's a bright little girl, and, and with the surgery now, uh, I think her heart function is much improved, and, and you know, I'd anticipate that she'll be back in school and, and uh, you know, graduating from high school and, and going on to things beyond that. My hope for her is, well, I think that, that the same for all moms, that they can, they can do whatever they want. They can grow up and be good persons. And um, I would love that she can do, you know, be a doctor or something, that she can help kids the same way that, that they help her. For Chris Brewer, who devoted so much of his life to this mission to save lives, there is great satisfaction. So you saved one little girl's life, and you've opened the way for other people to live longer, better, more productive lives. How does that make you feel? That's about as good as it gets.